In this video, we will be solving this warm-up exercise. This exercise asks you to calculate marginal utilities and the marginal rate of substitution for some common utility function. These utility functions will reappear in several chapters, so it's a good idea to get to know them now. If you know calculus, you will find this to be a breeze. Even if your calculus is shaky and non-existent, you can handle the first three utility functions just by using the definitions in the textbook. These three are easy because the utility functions are linear. Linear. If you do not know any calculus, fill in the rest of the answers from the back of the workbook and keep a copy of this exercise for reference when you encounter these utility functions in later problems. In the previous video, we solved the first three utility functions using two methods. Your first method involved the definition approach and the second method involved the calculus approach. But from now onward, we would be only using the calculus approach as it is much convenient and the functions are no longer linear. So let's begin. We have these three utility functions where for each of the utility function, you are asked to calculate the marginal utilities and marginal rate of substitution. Before solving for the marginal utilities and marginal rate of substitution, let's quickly revise what do you mean by these terms. So by definition, your marginal rate of substitution or MRS measures the slope of the indifference curve at a given bundle of goods. It can be interpreted as the rate at which a consumer is just willing to substitute a small amount of good two for good one. Mathematically, your MRS is equal to the partial derivative of x1 with respect to the partial derivative of x2 or you can rewrite it as minus of mu1 divided by mu2. Now what do you mean by marginal utilities or your mu1 or mu2? Again by definition, the marginal utility of good 1 measures the rate of change in utility associated with a small amount of change in good 1. So your mu1 becomes del u by del x1 where del u represents the rate of change in utility and del x1 represents the rate of change in good 1 and for the calculation purposes we are keeping the amount of good 2 constant when we are calculating mu1 or your marginal utility for good 1. Likewise marginal utility for good 2 measures the rate of change in utility associated with a small change in the amount of good 2. So your mu2 is equal to partial derivative of u with respect to x2 and here we are keeping the amount of good 1 to be constant for the calculation purposes. So let's begin. Your first utility function is u of x1 comma x2 is equal to 2 under root x1 plus x2. From here we know that MRS is equal to minus of mu1 divided by mu2 and further these definitions give us the mathematical formula for your marginal utilities. So with this information we have your MRS is equal to minus mu1 divided by mu2 but in order to calculate the MRS you need mu1 and mu2. So let's calculate the marginal utilities. Here in order to calculate the marginal utility for good 1 you have to partially differentiate the utility function with respect to x1. That means you would be keeping or considering x2 to be a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0. Thus, your partial derivative of u with respect to x1 is 2 divided by 2 square root of x1 plus 0 or you can write it as 1 divided by square root of x1. Here I am assuming that from basic maths courses you should be knowing formula for the differentiation. So your mu1 becomes 1 divided by square root of x1. Now let's calculate the marginal utility of good 2. That is we have to partially differentiate the utility function with respect to x2 and here we would be keeping x1 constant. So your derivative becomes 0 as the derivative of constant is 0 because we are considering x to be a constant while calculating your marginal utility for good 2. So this would be 0 plus 1 which is 1. So your marginal utility for good 2 is 1. Now let's substitute these value into this equation and calculate the MRS which would be minus of mu1 divided by mu2. In our case mu1 is 1 divided by square root of x1 and mu2 is 1. Thus your marginal rate of substitution becomes minus 1 divided by square root of x1. So this is minus 1 divided by square root of x1. This is basic maths. 
So all you have to do is just keep in mind the formulas for marginal rate of substitution, marginal utilities, and you have to simply differentiate the utility functions to get your marginal utilities and then use those values of marginal utilities to get your MRS. Now let's move on to the next part, which is u of x1 comma x2 is now ln of x1 plus x2 where ln represents your natural logarithm. Again, we would be following the same procedure here your MRS would be equal to minus of mu1 and mu2 and in order to calculate the MRS we would be first calculating your marginal utility. Now in order to calculate the marginal utility of good one you have to partially differentiate your utility function with respect to x1 and for that you would be keeping your x2 to be a constant. So that would be the derivative of ln x1 is 1 divided by x1 and plus the derivative of x2 which is 0 as we are assuming x2 to be constant in this particular case. So your mu1 becomes 1 divided by x1. So your marginal utility for good 1 for this particular utility function is 1 divided by x1. Now let's calculate the marginal utility for good 2 and for that we would be partially differentiating the utility function with respect to x2 and for that we would be keeping x1 to be a constant and if your x1 is a constant then this entire term becomes constant and the derivative of a constant is 0 plus derivative of x2 with respect to x2 is 1 so this becomes 1 thus the marginal utility of good 2 is equal to 1. Now let's substitute the values of mu1 and mu2 into this equation to get the MRS. That would be minus of 1 divided by x1 divided by 1 which is equal to minus 1 divided by x1. Your MRS is minus 1 divided by x1. Now let's move on to the next utility function which is u of x1 comma x2 is equal to v which is a function of x1 plus x2. Now instead of giving us a specific form of a function, we are given a general form which is vx1. So in this particular case, your vx1 was twice of square root of x1 and here it was ln of x1. So now let's calculate the MRS and the MUs. Again your MRS is equal to minus of MU1 divided by MU2 and for that we would be needing marginal utilities. So your marginal utility of good 1 is the partial derivative of u with respect to x1 and for that we would be keeping x2 to be constant. So let's quickly differentiate it. The derivative of this is v prime x1. Since we don't know the exact functional form of v, thus we would be working with the general form since the question is given in that manner. And the derivative of x2 would be 0 as we are considering x2 to be constant here. So thus your mu1 would be v prime x1. Now let's calculate your mu2 that is the partial derivative of utility function with respect to x2 and for this we would be keeping x1 to be a constant. This implies your vx1 now becomes a constant and the derivative of a constant is 0. So that would be 0 plus differentiating x2 with respect to x2 would be 1. So this is 1. Hence your mrs would be minus of v prime x1 which is your mu1 divided by mu2 which is 1 and this is nothing but minus of v prime x1 this is your v prime minus of v prime x1 and your marginal utility for good 2 is 1 let's move on to the next set of utility functions where your one utility function is x1 multiplied by x2 and the second utility function is x1 to the power a and x2 to the power b again we have to calculate your marginal utilities in mrs for your reference i have kept the definitions of marginal rate of substitution which is the slope of the indifference curve at a given bundle of goods and the mathematical formula is equal to minus mu1 is equal to mu2 and mu1 is partial derivative of u with respect to x1 and mu2 is partial derivative of u with respect to x2. So you can always refer to these formulas in case you get stuck. Now let's begin with these utility functions. Your first set of utility function is x1 comma x2 and for that we have to calculate your mrs which is equal to minus of mu1 divided by mu2. Now again in order to calculate your mrs we would be needing the mu1 and mu2 so let's first calculate these so your mu1 is nothing but partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x1 and for this we would be keeping x2 to be constant so partially differentiating this with respect to x1 would be x2 
so your mu1 is nothing but x2 now let's partially differentiate this with respect to x2 keeping x1 constant in order to calculate your mu2 so that would be nothing but x1 as x1 is a constant and the derivative of x2 with respect to x2 is 1. So a constant multiplied by 1 is equal to constant which is x1 in this particular case. So your mu2 is x1. Now let's substitute the values of mu1 and mu2 into mrs. So that would be minus of mu1 divided by mu2 where your mu1 is x2 and mu2 is x1 so your mrs is minus of x2 divided by x1 let's move on to the next utility function where your utility function is x to the power a and x2 to the power b again we will use the same approach where in order to calculate the mrs we have to first calculate your marginal utilities now your marginal utility is now mu1 is nothing but the partial derivative of utility function with respect to x1 and for that we would be keeping x2 to be constant here this term is constant which means it would remain as it is since it is in multiplication and let's differentiate this with respect to x1 that would be a x1 to the power a minus 1 I am doing this differentiation using the basic formula of differentiation which you must have learned in your basic maths. In case you don't recall these formulas, I would suggest to quickly revise these formulas as you would be needing these differentiation formulas in your various questions in the workbook. Now let's calculate the marginal utility of good 2 which is nothing but the partial derivative of u with respect to the partial derivative of x2 and here we would be keeping x1 to be constant so it remains as it is since it is in multiplication and we have to differentiate this with respect to x2 so that would be b x2 to the power b minus 1 now let's calculate the mrs that is nothing but minus of mu1 divided by mu2 your mu1 is x2 to the power b a x1 to the power a minus 1 divided by x1 to the power a b x2 to the power b minus 1 so let's keep the constants outside so that would be a divided by b multiplied by x2 b minus b minus 1 multiplied by x1 a minus minus 1 minus a this is nothing but minus a divided by b x2 to the power 1 multiplied by x1 to the power minus 1 that is minus a divided by b x2 divided by x1 so let's put all these values into this table here we get that my mu1 is a x2 2 to the power b x1 to the power a minus 1 mu2 is b x1 to the power a x2 to the power b minus 1 and your mrs is minus a divided by b multiplied by x2 divided by x1 now let's move on to the next set of utility functions again we are asked to calculate the marginal utilities in mrs and you can always refer to these definitions of mrs and marginal utilities in case you get stuck where these are your formulas for mrs and marginal utility of good one and marginal utility of good two let's begin your first utility function is x1 plus 2 multiplied by x2 plus 1 and we have to calculate the mrs and mu's for this utility function again in order to calculate the mrs we have to first calculate the marginal utility so let's do that your marginal utility of good one is nothing but the partial derivative of utility function with respect to x1 and for the calculation purposes we would be keeping the x2 to be constant thus this entire term becomes constant for calculation of mu1 that would be x2 plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of this with respect to x1 which is nothing but 1 so mu1 is x2 plus 1 this is x2 plus 1 Similarly, let's calculate the marginal utility of good 2 which is the partial derivative of utility function with respect to x2 and for this we would be keeping x1 to be constant hence this entire bracket becomes a constant which would be as it is x1 plus 2 multiplied by the derivative of this with respect to x2 that would be 1. So your mu2 becomes x1 plus 2. So this is x1 plus 2. Now let's calculate the mrs which is equal to minus of mu1 divided by mu2. Here we calculated the value of mu1 as x2 
plus 1. The value of mu2 as x1 plus 2. So your MRS is nothing but minus of x2 plus 1 divided by x1 plus 2. And remember that this minus is to the entire bracket. So that would be minus of x2 plus 1 divided by x1 plus 2. Let's move on to the last part where your utility function is of the form x1 to the power a and x2 to the power b. And for this again we have to calculate your marginal utilities and the MRS. So we would begin by calculating the marginal utilities like all the previous cases. So your marginal utility is the partial derivative of u with respect to x1 and for that we would be keeping x2 to be constant. Thus your marginal utility of good one is a x1 to the power a minus 1 plus 0 as x2 is constant thus your mu1 is a x1 to the power a minus 1 so this is a x1 to the power a minus 1 now let's calculate the marginal utility for good 2 which is the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x2 and for that we would be keeping good 1 to be constant or x1 to be constant so that would be 0 as this is constant in this particular case plus the derivative of x2 to the power a which is nothing but a x2 to the power a minus 1. Thus your mu2 is a x2 to the power a minus 1. Now let's substitute these values into the for formula for MRS which is equal to minus of mu1 divided by mu2. Your mu1 is a x1 to the power a minus 1 and mu2 is a x2 to the power a minus 1. This gets cancelled and your MRS is minus of x1 divided by x2 whole to the power a minus 1. So this column B minus of x1 divided by x2 whole to the power a minus 1. So that was all for this question.